Assalamu alaikum everybody. Okay. Just imagine how much nerdy we are. We are studying at the New Year's Eve when everybody is actually partying. And we are studying. So, a big round of applause for you all. Very good, guys. Uh, keep on working hard like that. So that you will, inshallah ta'ala, have a very good future ahead. Okay? Always remember one thing. That whoever works hard, the more luck is there for the person. Okay? This is my, uh, you know, way of spending life. Okay? Literally, whenever I worked hard, always the luck was on my side. Okay? So work hard so that inshallah Allah success will follow you and will reach to you inshallah. Okay. All right. So let's start. Uh, drugs acting on anterior pituitary gland. And since today we are on the last hormone. Okay. The last stimulant hormone uh, category of the two last hormones which we had to discuss. So I would expect you all to study okay and on Monday on Monday um, around 11 a.m. I will upload a test in your Google classroom it will be in the form of a Google form okay you would click on it the link would be uploaded at 11 the link would be uploaded at 11 a.m. And it will actually get off at 11.40. Oh God. My children are hyperactive right now. Okay. All right. So you see here, drugs acting on anterior pituitary gland. So this is, uh, we are going to talk about the TSH, okay, which is the thyroid stimulant hormone. And we also call it the thyrotropin. And then we'll talk about Adrenocorticotropic uh, hormone, which is ACTH, which is also called corticotropin and cosyntropin. Okay. All right. So let's talk about TSH, which is thyrotropin. As the name suggests, it will go towards the thyroid hormone. Just give me a second. I want to tell my children. Okay, so now you see, wait a minute, let me drag my picture down. So now with a look, TSH is a 211 amino acid glycoprotein with two subunits that is secreted from the anterior pituitary. If I were you, I would have made a table at the back of my notebook and I would have written all of the names of these hormones and I would have written that how many amino acids are linked together to make up these hormones okay all right so tsh stimulates the production and release of t3 and t4 t3 is triiodothyronine and t4 is thyroxine from the thyroid gland the effect is mediated by stimulation of a specific tsh receptor all right so specific tsh receptor he can We'll talk about it even more. In the plasma membrane, thereby increasing intracellular CMP. Okay. I want you all to actually make a table and try to, uh, you know, squeeze it. Try to summarize it. And try to see that how many of the hormones are actually increasing the CMP level. How many of the hormones are actually decreasing the CMP level. Okay. So thyrotropin is available for use in diagnosis diagnosing the cause of thyroid deficiency so how exactly they'll do that they will administer this uh, uh, hormone okay and as a result they'll see if the body gets hyperactive or not okay and what is the uh, you know how, how exactly the body is responding all right and then they would analyze if the thyroid deficiency was there or not. If you look here, 
this is a snake like receptor can anybody here tell me what is the name of this receptor i advise you all to go to my um, playlist and go through the receptors and i want to check if you guys went or not so tell me i've i've given you a hint already that it's a snake like receptor what is this receptor called okay i did not receive even a single message yet i'm waiting okay so the thing is this i i am telling you right now and now i would expect you to go to my google uh, to go to the youtube okay and then open up the playlist of receptor uh, no ramela you're wrong so this is g protein coupled receptor okay i because if you look here this is written gs this is written here gq okay and i have made detailed videos on these topics okay that what is the role of gs what is the role of gq so i want you to go to the playlist of receptor i don't know how to link my videos on the youtube unfortunately uh, no beta this is not thyroid hormone receptor yeah this is a thyroid hormone receptor you see this is tsh receptor okay but i this specific kind of receptor is called g coupled protein receptor okay it is also called gpcr okay and it is also called serpentine receptor i want you all to please go through my playlist i want you all to please read about this receptor that where these receptors are present why these receptors are present what's its role and then you'll find out that whenever the tsh gets attached to the t tsh receptor so all of a sudden what will happen the G stimulatory effect would be produced and because of the stimulatory effect it will get uh, activated and the activated portion of the g uh, g receptor okay the activated portion will actually go to the adenylate cyclase again this is an enzyme within the cell membrane you see here this is the cell membrane so there is an enzyme called adenylate cyclase this stimulatory part would go towards the adenylate cyclase and then it will convert atp into cmp cmp will then activate the protein kinase a and as a result all of the actions will happen okay all right next is adrenocorticotropic hormone which is also called uh, corticotropin and co-syntropin so the structure acth is 39 amino acid peptide secreted from the anterior pituitary the n terminal 24 amino acid portion of the peptide has full biological activity the n terminal 13 amino acid of acth are identical to those in alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone so what are the actions wait so acth stimulates the adrenocortical secretion of glucocorticoids what are glucocorticoids we are going to discuss even in more detail in my upcoming lecture okay and to a lesser extent mineralocorticoids and androgen we are going to discuss that all in the upcoming lecture effects are mediated by specific membrane bound acth receptor coupled to an increase in uh, intracellular cmp excess acth level may produce hyperpigmentation because you see here we have we, ha we have seen that this resembles to the melanocyte and melanocyte is actually a melanin is a pigment in our uh, skin okay which makes our color complexion go dark 
All right. So you see here, excess ACTH levels may produce hyperpigmentation because of the activity of intrinsic alpha um, MSH portion of the peptide. Okay. ACTH is available in both human and bovine perfide preparation as well as synthetic. All preparation of ACTH are administered parenterally. So what is the therapeutic use? ACTH is used in the elevation of primary or secondary hypoadrenalism. Okay. ACTH may be used in special circumstances when increase in glucocorticoids is desired. However, the direct administration of steroids is usually preferred. Why? Why? Okay. Why are we preferring steroids? Why are we saying that we should give steroids for the uh, this effect rather than giving the ACTH? You see, because steroids, they won't produce, uh, you know, they, they won't produce that lethal effect as compared to this thing. Okay. Then adverse effect and contraindication. The adverse effect associated with ACTH are similar to those of glucocorticoids, which we'll study in our upcoming lessons. Uh, allergic reactions, acne, uterism, uh, and amenorrhea have been reported when these are being used. That is it, everybody. I hope you will prepare for your uh, lecture. Wait a minute. Let me stop the recording.